Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into one of the most complex and critical aspects again. And uh, of course it's part of Brexit. And it's the key negotiations and agreements that have shaped the UK's departure from the European Union. From the withdrawal agreement to the trade and cooperation agreement, we'll break down these crucial documents and what they mean for the UK and its relationship for the biggest rest of Europe. If you ever wondered about the nuts and bolts of Brexit, you're in the right place here. So let's get started. Our journey begins with a withdrawal agreement, of course. This is the document that set the stage for the UK's exit from the EU. Negotiated over several years, the withdrawal agreement was finalized in October 2019 and officially came into effect on January 31st in 2020. At its core, the withdrawal agreement is all about ensuring an orderly exit. And it covers several key areas. We first have the separation issues. This includes the financial settlement the UK agreed to pay to the EU, often referred to as the divorce bill. It's about honoring the commitments made while the UK was a member. And secondly, we have the citizens' rights. A crucial part of the agreement was protecting the rights of EU citizens living in the UK and UK citizens living in the EU. The agreement aimed to ensure their residency, work rights and other benefits to remain secure. And third, we have the Northern Ireland Protocol, perhaps the most contentious part of the withdrawal agreement. This protocol aims to prevent a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, which is an EU member state. It creates a special arrangement where Northern Ireland follows some EU rules, creating a de facto customs border in the Irish Sea. This agreement was essential for the transition period, which lasted until December 31st in 2020. It was a lifeline to ensure the UK's departure didn't lead to chaos at the border or a disruption in everyday life. But the withdrawal agreement was just one part of the puzzle. What about the future relationship? That's where the next major agreement comes into place. And enter the Trade and Cooperation Agreement or TCA. This agreement was finalized in December 2020 and came into effect on January 1st in 2021. It's the comprehensive deal that outlines the future relationship between the UK and the EU after leaving. And the TCA covers several important areas. The first, of course, is trade. The TCA allows for tariff-free and quota-free trade in goods, which is vital for both sides. However, while it avoids tariffs, there are new customs checks and regulatory barriers that businesses need to navigate. And this means there is no longer seamless trade as before. Secondly, we have fishing rights. One of the more contentious points in the negotiations, the TCA outlines how EU fishing boats will have access to UK waters. The agreement allows EU fishermen to continue operating in British waters, but with a gradual reduction in quotas over five years. And third, we have the regulatory alignment. The agreement establishes a framework for cooperation on regulatory standards. While the UK is no longer part of the EU single market, there are still some alignments and mutual recognition to facilitate trade and avoid regulatory divergence that could disrupt business. And fourth, we have security and law enforcement. The TCA also covers aspects of security cooperation, including the exchange of data and collaboration on issues like terrorism and organized crime. It's about ensuring that even outside the EU, the UK and EU can work together on security matters. The Trade and Cooperation Agreement is crucial for maintaining economic ties and ensuring that Brexit doesn't mean a complete severance of relations between the UK and the EU. It's designed to balance the need for trade and cooperation with the new political reality. Aside from the withdrawal agreement and the trade and cooperation agreement, 
There are other agreements and ongoing negotiations that play a significant role. First of all, the Northern Ireland Protocol. As mentioned earlier, this protocol is part of the withdrawal agreement, but is crucial enough to warrant its own mention. It's been a focal point in ongoing negotiations and discussions, particularly concerning its implementation and impact on trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Secondly, we have the EU-UK Data Adequacy Agreement. This agreement allows for the continued exchange of personal data between the UK and the EU. It's important for businesses and organizations that handle data across borders, ensuring that data protection standards remain high and consistent. And thirdly, there are sector-specific agreements. Various sector-specific agreements have been made in areas like aviation, nuclear energy and scientific research. And these agreements ensure that essential sectors can continue to operate smoothly despite the broader changes brought by Brexit. And each of these agreements adds another layer to the complex web of post-Brexit relations between the UK and the EU. They are all part of a broader effort to manage the transition and build a new framework for cooperation. So what's the impact of all of these agreements and what does the future hold? The agreements have created a new status quo. For businesses, there are new rules and processes to adapt to, which can mean increased costs and logistical challenges. For citizens, the changes affect everything from travel to access to services. Looking forward, there will likely be ongoing negotiations to fine-tune these agreements and address any emerging issues, but not complete renegotiations. The UK and the EU will need to continue working together to ensure that the relationship remains strong and mutually beneficial. Brexit has been a monumental shift and understanding these agreements helps us see how the UK and the EU are navigating their new relationship. But what do you think about the agreements and their impact? Share your thoughts in the comments below and if you found this uh, little overview helpful, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more insights into Brexit and UK politics. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. You know there's one right here in the end screen.